Okay, so this is the second question on the practice exam. Uh, and so it's about tangent lines again because the derivative is the star of the show. And we use it to do all kinds of things and among other things, find tangent lines. So it says consider the curve y equals x cubed minus x squared. And part A is find a point on the curve where the tangent line has slope 8. And just a reminder of what finding a point means. So you have to give the xy coordinates. Oh, shoot, what happened? Um, okay, so just like last time, I'm going to meaninglessly go on a geometric adventure where I draw a picture of the curve for no reason. Um, so these things where you have x cubed minus, you know, a times x, where a is some number, I really like these, where a is some positive number, I, I like these functions, they look kind of like this. Um, so I, you know, I picked that out because I know it kind of looks like that, and that's a nice shape. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to find a point, you know, you can see that there are at least two, and I guess we don't know for sure that there aren't three, because there could be a point here where the tangent line has slope 8. Turns out that there's probably not. In fact, I promise you there's not. But there will be a, pro a point here where the slope of the tangent line is 8, Okay, we don't know exactly what the y-coordinate is, I mean the x-coordinate is. And there's going to be another point over here where um, where the slope of the tangent line is 8. And I don't care which one you find, whichever one you like the best. Probably most people would pick the positive one. And so you didn't have to just look at my scrawl. I actually made a better picture of this function. So you can see that I was kind of telling the truth. And so there's a more handsome version. Okay, and let me erase this. Okay, so on this problem we don't have to find the derivative in that god-awful way. We can just use the rules. So let's just go ahead and do that. And since we're given an equation instead of a function, maybe it's better to use Leibniz notation. I mean this, uh, so you know this means the same thing as like y prime or f prime just means take the derivative. So if we, t if we take the derivative of this thing, the 3 comes down, and then you subtract 1 from what was there before, so that leaves 2. And same thing here, but usually when it's 2 times x or something, you just kind of think of it, the x is just disappearing. All right, and so now I have the derivative, so what does this thing do for me? So remember how this works. Maybe I should just type because I, my handwriting is so bad. So if you put values in for x, what comes out is the slope of the tangent line to y equals x cubed. Maybe I should start drawing again here. The slope of the tangent line to this curve Okay, that's supposed to be a curve, even though it's an equation. See how it relates y and x and everything. So what comes out is the slope of the tangent line to that curve at x. And so I am kind of abusing what we call abusing notation by using the x in too many different ways. But you know what I mean. Or I'm, I'm, I would cry if I didn't force myself to believe that that was true. So I'm going to assume so you know what I mean. And so what we have to do here is we have to find the input that makes 8 come out. Um, okay, so, all right, now I can start drawing again. So basically, how you, you know, we have this question that we want to ask the universe. So what input makes 8 come out? So this is one of those great questions that require no thought at all to answer because some really smart person that lived a long time ago figured out a recipe for doing it. And so all you have to do is set up this equals 8. So what input makes 8 come out is the same thing as solving this equation, 3x squared minus 2 equals 8. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, should, should I make? No, there's no more space. 
So let me add 2 to both sides to get rid of this 2, right? And so that leaves 3x squared equals 10. And now I can get rid of this 3 by dividing both sides by 3. And that gives x squared equals 10 over 3. Which is not the greatest number, um, but it's not the worst number either. What is it? It's like 3.3333333. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So now I need to get rid of the square. So I take the square root of both sides and then we say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of, so when you take the square root you have to consider the, the, the negative possibility because there's a negative number which when squared is equal to 10 thirds, right? So I don't want to ignore that. So the square root of 10 over 3 and that's the answer. Um, so in that picture I drew earlier, if you remember that scrawl that I put on the screen, there was there was one answer on the positive side and there was one answer on the negative side, and you can see this is where they come from. So the plus one is that guy and the minus one is him. Um, all right, so so now let me kind of show you what I know in a hideous picture. I know that here is the input that makes um, Okay, the input beneath the point that we're interested in. We're interested in this point where the tangent line has slope 8, right? But what we do really just found was the x-coordinate of that input. And we found that it is the square root of 10 over 3. Alright, so how do you find the y-coordinate? Well, you have to plug it into the original function. So this point is actually, okay, so the input same as the x-coordinate, is the square root of 10 over 3. And now the output is what happens when you plug this into the original function. So for, for the moment, let me just call this f of the square root of 10 over 3. You say, Hunter, you described this as an equation. There was no function. <coughs> but psychically, you know what I mean. And so what is, what is this? This is, um, I plug it into x cubed minus uh, 2x, right? So so what happens when you plug this thing in here? It doesn't get any prettier, unfortunately. So we have now the square root of 10 over 3 cubed minus 2 times the square root of 10 over 3, okay? And I know maybe you don't like carrying the, the fraction I mean the radical around, but there's nothing wrong with it. And so we're done. So our, our answer is, so this is the y-coordinate, and we said the x-coordinate was just the square root of 10 thirds. So put it in parentheses here to make it official. And now let's go paste it in the answer slot. Okay. Doesn't really fit there. That's the answer. Okay, and you know we could do this on a calculator, but we're we're trying no calculators on the exam, so this is fine. And B says, "What is the equa?" Oh my God, what is the equation for the line in part A? So these numbers are ugly, but it's a really easy question to answer because we have something called um, slope-intercept form. Remember this? So you can pause this video and go look it up on Wikipedia or something. So if you know if you know a point and you know the slope of a line through that so if you have one point here, so if you know a slope of a line that goes through it, that uniquely determines a line. So there should be a way to just translate this geometric situation into an equation without thinking, and there is and the way you do it is point-slope form. So here's the way point-slope form works. Suppose that the the point that you're talking about it has the coordinates x1, y1. So in this in this case, the point that we're talking about has these even more hideous. Do you like x1, y1, or do you like this mess more? Um, but at any rate, whatever the coordinates of the point are, um, you just plug it into this formula y minus y1 equals m, so m is the slope of this line, 
So the slope is m. And times x minus x1. OK. So now all we have to do is um, make ourselves write some really terrible things. So we have to write, it's still on clipboard, there it is, OK. So plugging all this stuff in, by the way, what is m? What is the slope of the line that we're talking about? Remember the, the whole problem began when we decided that we were going to work with the line, the tangent line with slope 8. So it's no mystery what m is, m is 8. And so what are these, what are the points? You can just read it off here. So we have y minus, it's y1. So God, should I add parentheses to it? It's so horrible in the first place. Um, no, I won't. Okay. Uh, 10 over 3. I'm also going to, for my own convenience, turn this into a lesson about exponents. If you have the square root of this cubed, it's the same thing as raising to the 3 halves because square root is one half and exponents multiply. And now I do minus, I'm supposed to subtract this part too, so minus this minus makes it a plus, in fact. So plus two times the square root of 10 over three is equal to, get rid of this stuff, is equal to, is equal to, is equal to, m, which is 8, times x minus the point, the x coordinate of the point, so square root of 10 over 3, and that is the answer. So let me just cut it and paste it here in the answer slot. Okay, and we're done. That's it. That's the end of the problem. Not very hard, maybe kind of fun, I don't know. Um, better stop.